So, why do the rich care about making money? Well, the poor certainly need to care about making money. When one's resources are only enough to scrape by, money is all that matters. And it's important to the middle class as well. Looking after their spouses, their children, there is a culture of dependence that weighs them down. The rich want to make money because they can always be richer. There is always another echelon of wealth to rise above. Some degree of opulence that is beyond their grasp. They drive to even further heights, seeking to slake their thirst for coin. They care about making money simply because they can. To do so, the rich exploit the people far below them on the social ladder, the poorest of the poor. To the oil magnate, to the harsh dictator, to the kings and queens and lords and ladies, the common people are specks of dirt. And to Marshall, Carter, and Dark, the rich are unto ants. People, regardless of social standing, are all the same. The poor may spend their savings on worthless yet treasured trinkets sold by the middle class. The salary man may splurge on a pretty ring for his wife, the profits of which go into the pockets of a wealthy mining boss. In the same way, the gullible rich will burn millions of dollars on a single impossible object. Everyone is willing to waste their precious, precious money on something out of the ordinary. But value is artificial. The poor spend their pennies on the mass-produced China, convinced that it has some worth. The rich convince the middle class that diamonds are rare and valuable, despite the stones being retrieved from Africa by the billion. Marshall, Carter, and Dark convince the rich that the impossible has value, while any anarchist on a street can twist a die into a hypercube. The methodology of such a scheme is quite simple, but the critical step is to gain a market monopoly. If you are the only seller in town, you can set the price at any level you desire, so long as you can drum up demand. In this regard, Marshall Carter and Dark have the advantage. For hundreds of years, they were the only peddlers of anomalous wares in the world. They had the time to gain the capital, and with that capital they can now outprice even the most competitive upstarts. So while organizations such as the Foundation, the GOC, and the Horizon Initiative resent the company's existence, they are unable to deal with such an unassailable economic powerhouse. With a glance, Marshall Carter and Dark could level a city, bankrupt a country, with a single call. They could plunge the planet into a thermonuclear war. And yet, to the eternal relief of all, they are the least volatile players on the anomalous field. After all, if the veil of secrecy were to break, their trinkets would become worthless. Their business would crumble and dissolve. While this may cause some to think of Marshall, Carter, and Dark as a massive, faceless corporation, their workforce numbers at most in the order of a hundred. Their operations are directed, streamlined, maximized for efficiency and minimizing cost. Further manpower if necessary, is outsourced from other organizations. And those in the highest positions of power are perhaps the most mysterious. Wild stories abound on the subject, depending on the source. They may be ghosts or demons, old men sending messages from beyond the grave, faceless monsters from another world, or even shape-shifting lizardmen. A major part of their operation is establishing supply lines between various anomalous groups. Marshall, Carter, and Dark purchased directly from groups such as Dr. Wondertainment and the factory, reselling their goods at exorbitant prices. Of course, Prometheus Labs gladly supplies the group with their latest research in exchange for examples of exotic or complex anomalies, and they often host an art exhibitions exerting notable control of the artistic marketplace. Similarly, they host various social functions for the rich and powerful people in the world. 
with hooks throughout Europe, America, Russia, and China, there is never trouble finding a market for a given item. They are, of course, willing to sell to any buyer, including groups such as the Chaos Insurgency, who are some of the most valuable clients. Perhaps the organizations most opposed to Marshall, Cotter, and Dark are the Mana Charitable Foundation and the Serpent's Hand. Mana Charitable often attempt to sabotage their operations due to their restrictions of anomalous goods to the upper class. However, their limited range and resources make them more irritating than threatening. The Serpent's Hand, meanwhile, are directly and openly antagonistic, caring neither for the veil of secrecy or the company's continuing practice of anomalous human trafficking. And impossible to economically intimidate, they represent the only pervasive threat to the group's operation. Without question, Marshall Carter and Dark are one of the most important pieces on the board in the anomalous world, occasionally putting other players into check, but never checkmate. For Marshall Carter and Dark, the planet is an intricate network they have secured safely beneath their thumb, where winning and losing are meaningless terms. There is no need to move pieces when you can move the board. And you could end the match at any time. There's only one reason to continue. It's all about playing the game. Thank you very much for watching. Thought I'd put together a little reading today from the Marshall Carter and Dark Cub. But, oh, let's get the author real quick. Let's click. Let's click. Hold on. Hold on. Get to the next page. Uh, posted by Randomini. There. I did it. I gave proper credit where credit is due. Normally I read my own stuff so I don't have to bother. <laughs> if you like this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell next to that so you're updated as soon as I upload a new video. And join everybody who's here on the screen already, including Vivi, probably a wizard and definitely not a scientist, hot-headed Canadian, and lawful evil, who have all pledged at the O5 tier. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Thursday.